So in this clip we'll present a simple textbook theory of uh, national money markets, national financial markets and uh, we will see how uh, that determines the interest rate and how monetary policy works in a very simple textbook version. Uh, so let me put that up here, the money market and one, the determination of the interest rate and second monetary policy which of course will be geared towards uh, changing the interest rate so let me clear the page here and uh, begin with a couple of assumptions first we have two assets namely money and bonds money is assumed uh, to be uh, to not pay a return so holding cash uh, does give you gives you no return uh, except for uh, the uh, security that it provides in being available for making transactions uh, the bonds on the other hand other on the other hand pay uh, a rate of return uh, but are not risk-free so these are risky assets risky assets versus the risk-free asset or liquid assets versus uh, relatively illiquid assets so <coughs> we have these two assets and we have um, two agents or two types of agents that's one the central bank and two the private sector private sector financial market participants and uh, these two uh, interact uh, so the central bank as you'll see determines the money supply which is a somewhat outdated assumption uh, used in reality the central bank rather targets the interest rate but uh, we can go with this textbook version um, since it is a good first approximation and uh, the private sector, uh, private sector participants uh, determine money demand. And obviously, as in any market here, when supply is equal to demand, then we have an equilibrium, and this equilibrium will give us the interest rate. So the interest rate is the variable that clears money supply and money demand. The interest rate is the variable that brings the financial market into equilibrium. Let's go to a new page and uh, look at money supply and money demand in a little more detail so first of all m over p is the real money balances indexed here with an s that's money supply money supply is exogenous set by the central bank and second money demand is the uh, m over p d and now the question is what is money demand <coughs> money demand is a function of income and the interest rate so <coughs> principally these two arguments determine what the real money demand is uh, with a positive sign on income and a negative sign on the interest rate so that simply uh, the higher the real income the higher are the cash needs in order to conduct transactions and uh, on the other hand the higher the interest rates the higher is the demand for bonds so that uh, the higher the lower will be the demand for real money so essentially if you can make a higher profit with the risky asset you will shift your wealth towards that and uh, demand less money on the other hand the lower the interest rate uh, the more difficult the more unreasonable it seems to give up uh, the comfort of having cash in hand uh, for the little bit of return that you get for holding the risky asset we can put that into a diagram with the interest rate on this axis real money balances on this axis and then we have the two curves well money supply is exogenous so uh, here as a, a straight line independent of the interest rate 
and you see here y is exogenous to this diagram but the interest rate is not so we can draw this line as a downward sloping function of the interest rate here's the money demand function and we get at the intersection here let's highlight it as well at the intersection we get r star which would be the equilibrium interest rate that clears the financial markets now uh, let's consider a couple of um, changes in exogenous variables uh, and that will get us as well to monetary policy uh, I will just redraw the diagram and we'll get our equilibrium here so the question now is what if we have a rise in real income what is the impact of a rise in real income we know that this is LYR and M over P is so we said that uh, the demand for money changes uh, with the same sign as the change in income so that that partial is positive since Y is exogenous in this diagram we get a rightward shift of this curve so we get a rightward shift here and we have LY2R where Y2 is larger than Y1 the original income so what has happened here now if uh, in this situation you see a real income has increased uh, and people have more people have higher cash needs in order to conduct transactions uh, so they're trying to get their, their hands on more cash there's only one way you can do that you have to sell part of your bonds so you try to shift your portfolio from maybe being heavy in bonds to being heavier in cash because you have those cash needs now what happens if everybody's doing that well you get uh, downward pressure on bond prices and the price of bonds is inversely related to the interest rate so as you're getting downward pressure on bonds the interest rate rises and we're getting this increase in R so here's R star 1 and here's R star 2 now we can do a similar thought experiment and consider monetary policy let's draw a diagram money supply and money demand what if the central bank wants to reduce the interest rate well it's quite straightforward to see that that requires an increase in the money supply which will lead us to a new R star R star 1 and R star 2 so we have with the increase in the money supply here we get a reduction in the interest rate what has happened well we said we have these two actors here the central bank and the private sector PS the central bank increases the money supply by buying bonds so uh, central bank goes out and buys bonds from uh, the owners of the bonds the holders of the bonds which are the private sector market participants and uh, as the central bank is buying these bonds their price increases which again because of that inverse relationship between the price of bonds and the interest rate leads to a reduction in the interest rate so essentially uh, the central bank acting as a large participant in the bond market leads to a change in the price of bonds a change in the yield on the bonds and at the same time to this increase in the money supply 
you can of course make the same argument in the reverse direction so you have MPS here and MPD here so that a reduction in the money supply implies this rise in interest rate again what has happened here well the central bank now goes out and sells bonds so as the central bank sells bonds uh, the price falls and the yield on the bond rises but as the central bank sells bonds it mops up cash that has previously been in private sector hands and reduces liquidity so uh, let me put that here maybe uh, CB uh, buys bonds and CB sells bonds in any of these cases the key issue is that this simple domestic or national financial market with two asset gives us uh, a clear explanation what determines the interest rate uh, which is private sector uh, return seeking or security seeking behavior on the one hand and monetary policy on the other conducted by the central bank.